Yeah, we back. Now, today we're going to have some real talk, man. I was originally going to cover this a couple weeks ago, but for some reason, I just lost the inspiration. But considering the topic is back in the headlines, I guess I could finally attack it. Nia Long had made a statement, and as you can see by the headline, she had said, Nia Long says, calling films black movies only holds us back. Now, I have a lot to say about the topic. She actually went on some talk show, some program, some platform. I apologize for forgetting the lady's name who is hosting the show, but the lady had asked her to clarify her statement. So I'm going to play the footage and I'm going to come back on my commentary. As you already know, let's go. How it goes, because, you know, they take one headline and yeah, turn yeah, into the, something. The, so. Read that again. Let me see that again. Uh, How much time turn, we got? Turns like good. black movies and black famous only hold us back. Okay, so what I mean I, I, by, you know what ahead. I mean. I know, but go ahead. But, but so. For them. For the white people in the audience. <laughs> What I mean by that is if we continue to practice this idea of separatism, mm -hmm. we continue to divide. Yeah. And I will always and forever hold my fist up because I understand the experience. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that the more we understand about one another and the more accepting we are of one another, this thing called art should be representative of all of us. Thank you. Yeah, we back. Now, to the simple-minded, what Nia Long said might sound profound. What Nia Long said might sound intelligent. What Nia Long said might have sound groundbreaking. But her mentality is the same reason why there were so many thriving black businesses in America around the 50s and the 60s. And so many of those businesses were abandoned so people can go work in the white corporation. Her mentality is why so many black people from around the world leave their countries and never come back. They run to the United States, they run to Europe, because at the end of the day, her mentality is, look, if you can't beat them, join them. If Nia Long felt that black institutions, black media houses, black movie studios were powerful enough to stand on their own and be an individual force that can be a powerful competitor in the market, she wouldn't be talking none of this nonsense. The reason why Nia Long feels the way she feels is because she does not have the belief in her people that we can actually do what white people did, that we can actually build what white people built, that we can actually stand alone and be successful and prosperous. Because Nia Long doesn't feel that her own people can be true competitors in the market, true competitors in the field of media, entertainment, whatever you wanna call it, her strategy now is to break all barriers, break all labels, break all separation. Let's put everybody under the same umbrella. And what Nia Long doesn't understand is the reason why these separations were made, the reason why there were different categories and there was originally separation and segregation is because the Europeans felt that what they had, what they built was superior to other groups, right? They wanted to stand alone because they felt they were powerful enough to stand alone. The Europeans did their best to make the distinction and the separation because they felt they were powerful enough to build something that can rival all competitors. And when you look at Hollywood, that's a fact. They built Hollywood from the ground up. They built Hollywood. They built Hollywood to a powerful entity and Nia Long doesn't feel that her people can do the same. So her strategy is, listen, if you can't beat them, join them. The reason why there were so many black businesses back towards the middle of the 20th century that fell apart, that crumbled, and everybody went to go work for the white corporation. And ever since then, that's been a strategy. If you can't beat them, join them. I believe about what? Over 95% of black people in the United States work for a white corporation or work for a white business or work for a white person in some way, form or fashion. Because as a collective, our mentality is if you can't beat them, join them. And people like Nia Long and people who share her mentality, the problem that they have is they can only rise up to a certain level within somebody else's system, within somebody else's infrastructure. And because they're frustrated with the fact that they can only rise so far high up the ranks before they reach a certain ceiling or they reach a certain limit, because like I said, it's not their infrastructure. It's not their system. They didn't build it, create it or sustain it. They are simply a cog in the machine. They're simply an employee because they are frustrated that they cannot reach the highest levels within the business or within the within the system they pivot to a different strategy by saying let's break down all labels so you don't see me as black you don't see me as white we just all you know we all god's children we all humans so we don't got to compete right in a system of capitalism it's about competing it's about competition if that group of people they built their infrastructure you got to come back and build your own infrastructure 10 times better knock them off the market put them out of business that's capitalism but because so many of our people do not want to compete because so many of our people do not believe we can compete, 
right that leaves them frustrated by trying to find different ways to integrate into the system into a system that they did not create into infrastructure that they did not create that they do not own regardless if they break down labels and nobody's labeled a black movie or a white movie or a comedy movie or whatever kind of movie at the end of the day you are simply an employee a cog in the machine you are not an owner you are not a big time player you're not a head honcho you're not a boss in the industry the only way you can become a boss, the only way you can become powerful, the only way you can become a respected competitor is to build your own infrastructure, build your own system, become a competitor in the market. And the only way to become a competitor in the market is to have a superior product, is to outwork the competition, is to outdo the competition. But Nia Long, deep down, if you ask her, she doesn't believe that her people have the capability to outdo the competition. Because if she felt that she could outdo the competition, she would feel comfortable enough to stand alone. She would feel comfortable enough that we have the superior product. So it doesn't matter whether we have the label or not, we're still gonna come in and crush the game. She doesn't believe that for her people, right? So now she feels like we're being held back by using these labels. Of course, you're gonna be held back if you operate in a system that is not your own, not built and sustained by your people. Of course, you are an outsider, you are a foreigner. So of course, you can only reach so far high up the ranks. Like I said, you're never gonna be a shot caller. You're never gonna be a head honcho. Now, I do want to give a shout out to Tyler Perry, right? Now, I'm not a big fan of his content. I'm not a big fan of the product that he puts out, but he did take the steps. He did take the steps in establishing his own independent infrastructure. I believe he has his own independent movie studio somewhere down in Atlanta, Georgia. Correct me if I'm wrong. You see, that's a brother that gets it. That's a brother that gets it. He's not sitting around crying, talking about, oh, don't look at me as a black man. I'm not black. I'm just a man. I'm just a Christian man. I'm not a black man. <laughs> you know, trying to run away from the blackness so you can blend into the infrastructure. No, Tyler Perry, he went and built his own infrastructure. He went and built his own system, right? Stacked his money up, stacked his money up for putting out his movies. Movies that, to be honest, I never really was a fan of, but at the end of the day, they generated a lot of revenue, a lot of revenue that he came back, flipped it, invested it into his own independent setup. And see, regardless of if you like Tyler Perry's content or not, he's intelligent to know that, listen, I can't sit around and complain and try to and try to rewrite the rules. The, the only thing that I can do is come out with a superior product to the competition, outwork the competition, put out a better body of work than the competition, right? And let the audience decide, let the market decide, right? At the end of the day, we got to compete, man. We got to stop trying to find different ways so we don't got to compete, so we don't got to build and do for self. Nia Long, she's still stuck on that Martin Luther King, you know, lock arms. We all God's children. Man, stop that. We are in a system of capitalism. Everybody is trying to compete to put out the best product, to make the most profit, to see who has the most superior system and infrastructure. If you want to make your own rules so you can decide who gets held back and who doesn't get held back, you have to create your own system and infrastructure. But Nia Long does not believe that her people has what it takes because if she did, she would have no problem with the fact that it's a black movie. She would have no problem having that label on her work because if black movies were at the top of the charts, number one, crushing the box office, she would have no problem saying, oh, this is a black movie. Yeah, this is a black movie. Independent, self-made, self-produced -pro self black movie. If black people had our own independent movie studios and our own independent self-produced films, self-funded films, crushing the box office, number one, several weekends back to back to back at the end of the day you wouldn't see Nia Long talking about none of this nonsense talking about oh we got to learn about each other we got we can't be separated we got to come together and integrate you know lock arms together no because when you're winning when you're winning you always want to stand alone you always want to stand at the top of the trophy but when you're losing when you're losing that's when you always try to you know call on the coalition call on your allies call on your friends call on your connections so they can come help you out boost you up you know pull you up the ladder Nia Long's mindset is a losing mindset, is a loser's mindset. You see, Tyler Perry's mindset is a winner's mindset. He didn't sit around complaining about the labels and, and being a black man, none of that. He went out, put the bread up, started his own studio, started doing his own thing independently like a black man supposed to, like a real man supposed to. And instead of Nia Long getting behind that black man who's doing what he's supposed to do, building for his people, she's still desperately trying to integrate into somebody else's system, somebody else's infrastructure, somebody else's business model. And you're only going to be able to rise so far high up the ranks in somebody else's system. You're going to hit a ceiling. And if you want to avoid that ceiling or if you want to break that ceiling, you have to do for self. You have to establish your own thing independently. But before you can establish your own thing independently, you actually have to believe in your people that they can do it independently. And I don't believe Nia Long believes in her people at all. I don't agree with anything she said. I believe if we put our mind to it, if we put our money up and our creative talent up, we can bring products to the market that can compete at a very high level if we choose to do so. But that's not the path we choose to go. We constantly try to integrate into the system, try to find a way into the system, try to connect into the system. At the end of the day, you have to create your own system. 
When will you understand that? Nia Long, you too old not to understand that. You are elder. And in fact, before we even get out of here, man, I'm going to read an article from the Chicago Defender from that headline where it says, Nia Long says calling films black movies only holds us back. Longtime actress Nia Long believes using the term black movies to refer to black led films could be holding us back. In an interview with BuzzFeed, Long discussed how deeming movies as black may be trapping black actors and filmmakers into a specific box. Nia Long went on to say, I think terms like that hold us back and I have to catch myself sometimes too because I'm very proud of who I am, Long said. When I use the word black, I don't use it as a way to separate ourselves from anyone. I use it as a way to put an exclamation point behind our greatness because I don't think that it's always been celebrated and recognized. I have this thing in me, I'm being used to tell stories, to inspire our people and to serve as a voice, so I'm going to trust the process. If I read a script and I love it and I say I've got to do that, then I'm going to do it. The actress noted that even though she's unapologetically black on the big screen and in her day to day life, she still believes multiculturalism is important. She said, I'm also a lover of mankind and human beings and accepting of all people. So multiculturalism is equally as important to me. Okay, at the end of the day, that's the article right there. But let's discuss that real quick before we get out of here. You see her mindset, right? You see her mindset. She's not here to compete. She's not here to, you know, build for her people. She's not here to, you know, she's here to integrate. She's here to stand, you know, lock arms with, you know, everybody else while everybody else competing and building for their people. So she, you know, her mind is not even in the game. <laughs> Nia Long's head is not even in the game, right? Everybody is building their own independent systems, their own infrastructure, and she's talking about, you know, multiculturalism, but I'm unapologetically black. Uh, man, listen, man, listen. So many of these fake pro-black chicks, man. So many of these fake pro-black chicks, man. I'm telling you, it's probably like, I would say out of all the pro-black women, like if a black woman says she's pro-black, it's about a 90% chance that she's just, she's just saying that for the fashion trend. Like she's just saying that because it's a fashion statement, man. Most of these chicks is not pro-black, bro. Most of these women got a multicultural integrationist mindset. They're not pro-black. Like I said before, the reason why Europeans have always made the distinction between themselves and everybody else is because deep down, they felt that what they brought to the market, what they brought to the table was more superior than everybody else. Now, whether that's true or not, that's up to debate, right? But in their heart, in their belief, they felt that what they brought to the table was superior to other groups. So they always made the distinction between themselves and everybody else. Because Nia Long, she might say that she's unapologetically black, right? She might say that. But in her heart, she doesn't believe that because if she really believed that, like I said, she would feel comfortable bringing the product to the market, understanding that we got the best movies, we got the best media, we got the best music, and it can stand alone. You ever notice the musicians, they never complain about being labeled as black music. Why? Because black musicians are the best musicians on the planet, the most successful musicians on the planet, the most popular musicians on the planet, the best songwriters on the planet, the best producers on the planet. And that's why you've never heard a rapper or R&B singer or any type of black artist try to hold hands with the country artists and the rock and roll artists because they felt that they have the best product. We got the most music. We get the most sales. We get the most recognition. The hip hop artists, the rap artists, they feel comfortable standing alone in their own genre because their product is the one that is crushing the market. So they don't feel the need to go stand hand in hand with the country artists and the rock and roll artists and the, and the, and the blues artists. They feel like hip hop is dominating the landscape and it is. And the moral of the story is, listen, when people are winning, they feel comfortable standing alone. They love standing alone. They love lifting up the trophy alone. But when people feel like they're losing and they can't win, that's when they want to call in the coalition and they try to call in the allies and their friends and make their connections. But I guarantee if the situation changed overnight, and black movies were crushing the box office, had the most funding, had the most profits. I guarantee Nia Long would not be saying none of this. She wouldn't be talking about, oh, multiculturalism is important. We should include everybody. No, she would be bragging about, oh yeah, black movies made 70, $700 trillion last year. We crushing, we crushing the market. We crushing the industry. She would be celebrating. She would be bragging. She would be going for a victory lap. And that's why nobody takes it serious. And I don't either, man. At the end of the day, we got to build our own institutions, our own infrastructure, our own media houses, our own movie studios, our own record labels, everything. Period. Point blank. There's no way around it. Stop being lazy and do for self. Stop trying to ride the wave of other groups. Build your own. Do for self and compete in the market. OK, we live in a system of capitalism. So compete. OK, build your own thing. Bring it to the market and let and may the best man win. All right. It's your boy Nevercard Dessaline back in the building. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be 
running, now we be walking. When you be cornin', that's when they applaud it. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart it be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down a generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching, he blocking my vision. Care for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hour with it, wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so at least. Shorty be charged that I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.